What's up, Brain Shakers? Welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. Your host here, Brave Alastis. Today we are summarizing hypertensive disorders of a pregnancy. We have done a couple of videos on hypertensive disorders, what they are, their classification, the pathophysiology, how we can diagnose them, and some of those investigations that we do carry out, and some of the drugs as well that we use in the management of these hypertensive disorders. But one more last drug that we're going to be looking at is an important drug in the management of convulsions and the prevention of convulsions and this is no other than magnesium sulfate but what is magnesium sulfate we already know from the videos that we have already done that magnesium is a cation and it is the second most plentiful cation in intracellular fluids and it does play key role in neurochemical transmission as well as muscle sensitivity and that is why in most cases you'll find that it is administered in cases of tetany in cases of severe preeclampsia and eclampsia and now there has been a rise in its use in cases of nephritis, especially in children. But let's get into today's session and understand the role of magnesium sulfate in the management of severe preeclampsia and eclampsia. And if you have missed any of those videos, head on to our YouTube channel, which is the Brain Shakers Academy, and you will find those videos there and you will appreciate what is in them. So for today, let's quickly see what magnesium sulfate is. And we already know and we have already made mention that magnesium sulfate is going to play a key role in muscle sensitivity and a neurochemical uh, transmission. And we'll look at its mode of action. So what does it do? When magnesium sulfate has then been administered, within the muscle cells, there are receptors. And one of the receptors that we have already made mention is a receptor that we call the DHP receptor. This is the dehydropyridine receptor. Now the dehydropyridine receptor is what allows the movement of calcium into cells. Now, calcium is needed for the contraction of the muscle cells, that is for the movement of the actin and the myosin closer to each other, you need the calcium. And when you have administered the magnesium sulfate, all it is going to come in and do is block this dehydropyridine receptor so that there's no movement of calcium into the cell. Because when there is movement of calcium into the cell, it means that there's going to be now generation of what we call an action potential. And it is this this action potential that will either be uh, coupled or will be exacerbated because of the continuous influx of calcium and therefore you will be having more contractions or you get into a state now of tetany and that is why we can give magnesium sulfate into uh, cases of tetany or in the management of tetany. Why? Because it is going to control or regulate the movement of calcium into the cells and then prevent the continuous contractions of those muscle cells. So magnesium sulfate in most cases comes in different presentations, but the commonest presentation in which magnesium sulfate will come in is a 50% concentration. But when you are administering this magnesium sulfate, you need to reduce the concentration from 50% concentration to 20% concentration. From place to place, it differs on how you can administer the magnesium sulfate, but I'll look at two most common ways in which you can administer the magnesium sulfate. But the principle is the same. You're going to have what we call a loading dose, and then you will have a maintenance dose. So the principle is still the same. You first give a loading dose, then you come to the maintenance dose. Now, before we even get to the loading dose and the maintenance dose, we need to know what formula to use for us to actually come up with the desired amount to then give. Now, in the first instance, magnesium sulfate can be given as, loading dose can be given as four grams IV, and then the maintenance dose here will be given as one gram per hour. That is following the principle of continuing the administration of magnesium sulfate for 24 hours after delivery or after the last convulsion, whichever occurs last. So it means that if a woman does deliver here, 
and then later on has a convulsion you start counting from here and then you continue another 24 hours administering the magnesium sulfate so this will be given as a loading dose four grams intravenously this will be a 20 percent concentration and not a 50 percent concentration and then you have a maintenance dose here which will be given at one gram per hour which is also a 20 percent concentration and you will continue administering this through a syringe driver it's an infusion that you are given so you'll be giving it through a syringe driver and then you continue for the next 24 hours from the last uh, occurrence whether it is a delivery or it is a last conversion so that is one way in which you can administer this magnesium sulfate there is another way in which you can administer the magnesium sulfate so in another way you can administer the loading dose is going to be 14 grams of magnesium sulfate and then the maintenance dose so this is type 1 and this is the uh, way 2. Then the maintenance dose here is going to be 5 grams of magnesium sulfate every 4 hours. Okay, this one is going to be administered IM, this one is going to be administered IV and IM. So we'll come and look at uh, those uh, two methods on how magnesium sulfate is going to be administered so that it is not confusing But now let us reduce the uh, Concentration of magnesium sulfate from a 50% concentration to a 20% concentration So the formula is what do you have and what do you want? So what we have here is that we have an available concentration here Available concentration then we are going to multiply it by the volume over the desired concentration. So our desired concentration here is obviously the 20%. What we have is a 50%. So it most common presentation is going to be a 50% concentration in a 10 mu ampere, and that will be a five grams of magnesium sulfate. So you'll find that in the ampule of magnesium sulfate that you have here, you'll find that this is a 10 mu ampule. So in this 10 mu ampule that you have, you have five grams of magnesium sulfate and the concentration is 50%. But because you need to give a loading dose, which is four grams that has to be given IV, you want to reduce the concentration from 50% to 20%. So you do available concentration times of volume over the desired concentration. Now, if we do a simple arithmetic here, you notice that if there is five grams in 10 mules, so you're going to say five grams in 10 mules, meaning that four grams here is going to be eight mules, three grams here is going to be six mules, two grams here is going to be four mules, and one gram here is going to be two mils. So if you do find yourself having a different presentation from this one, you have a two gram, you have a one gram, you have a three gram, but yet the concentration is 50%, you will still use the same formula to arrive at how much will be your total volume to be administered. So we know that the one that we want here, if we're using this one, the first um, method of administering it, which is a four grams of IV, magnesium sulfate we know that four grams is going to be eight mils so what we are going to use is a volume of eight mils so from this ampule we are going to be getting only eight mils that is what we are interested in it means that that is the four grams that we want but that four grams or the eight mils that we have collected is actually 50 percent we need to reduce it so what do we have as our available concentration this four grams here is still 50 percent so we're going to say 50 percent and then what volume have we collected? We have gotten eight mils here. So we'll do eight. Over what do we want the concentration to be? We want it to be a 20% concentration. This will cancel. If you multiply 50 by eight, it should give you 400. And then 400 divided by the 20, you cancel that out. This is going to give you two in here, one, two into 40, it will give you 20. So your total volume now is going to be 20 mils. So you are going to be administering 20 mils intravenously because you would have reduced the percentage from a 50% concentration to a 20% concentration. Now, how do we know how much 
of this is actually our drug. We already have our volume here, which is eight mils. So all we are going to do is from the eight mils, from the 20 mils total volume, we're going to say minus the eight mils that we already have. And then we end up with the 12 mils. This is where the 12 mils that we add to the four grams of magnesium sulfate, 50% comes from to come up with the 20 mils as our total volume to administer intravenously. And this is what we're going to be giving for not less than five to 10 to 20 minutes IV slowly. So that is going to be our loading dose. Whether we are using the formula one or we're using formula two, we still have an IV to be administered. So from this second uh, formula, 14 grams here, the four grams is what is administered as IV. And even in the first one here, we have four grams here that will need to be administered intravenously. So we're administering this 20 mils as our IV dosage there. So if we have given our loading dose, we know where the, uh, we know how to reduce the concentration now, regardless of what presentation we have, what we are going to be using now. Let's try and use the second the second method, because we already know that you're using a syringe driver for the first one, uh, as maintenance dose, you'll be giving one gram over um, an hour. But if you're using the second method, your loading dose is 14 grams. And if you have 14 grams, it means that what you're going to be giving IV is going to be four grams. And remember that this is going to be a 20% concentration. So meaning that you're giving 20 mils intravenously. Then I am, you're going to give 10 grams. And this 10 grams, you're going to give five grams into the left buttock. And then you give another five grams into the right buttock. And to the five grams, remember to add one mil of 2% lignocaine. So you add one mil of 2% lignocaine or lidocaine, whatever you have a presentation, uh, but it should be at least a 2%, one mil of a 2% because it's a painful cation. You are actually administering an electrolyte uh, intramuscularly. So it is going to be painful. So you add a one mil as you give it intra, muscularly. So this is going to be your total loading dose because you are using the IM route also for the maintenance dose. That means that on your maintenance dose now, so this was your loading dose. Then when you come to the maintenance dose, you'll be giving five grams here. And this five grams that you'll be giving again is going to be IM. So you do the same again, you're going to add one meal of lidocaine or lignocaine, which is 2%. And this is going to be administered every four hours. So you can administer it in alternate buttocks. You administer it in the left this time, and then the next one you administer it into the right. So that is how you can administer magnesium sulfate. The two different ways in which you can administer magnesium sulfate. You have the first one, and then you have the second one. Now, as you are administering these um, magnesium sulfate, also take note that there are side effects to obviously lose look out for. The commonest that you would want to look out for is the reduction in urine output. So if you have anything less than 100 meals in four hours, then it means that you're going into levels, obviously, of toxicity. Then you also have to look at the respiratory rate. You don't want anything less than 12. And in some uh, literature to give you, you don't want anything less than 16 if you're on magnesium sulfate. So any reduction in the respiratory rate also, then you are going into levels of toxicity. And then you also need to look at the reflexes. So as you do the uh, administration of magnesium sulfate, you need to check the reflexes. That is on the sesamoid bone, you need to have a patella hammer, just apply a bit of pressure or hit the patella with that hammer and then see if there are any reflexes. When the reflexes start to become exaggerated or when the reflexes now become absent, then it means that you are getting into stages of toxicity. Now, if you get into levels of toxicity, what then do you do? You can administer an antidote and this antidote is called calcium gluconate. So 
calcium uh, glue connect sometimes if you have calcium chloride you can administer calcium uh, chloride so this calcium glue glue connect is usually 10 percent it's 10 percent and it comes in presentations of 10 mil so you can administer a one gram so you administer one gram of calcium gluconate, which is the total 10 mils of 10% calcium gluconate. So depending on where you are and what your policy is, some uh, policies will tell you to administer 500 milligrams of calcium gluconate, which is obviously going to be five mils of the total um, volume of the calcium gluconate. But if you have administered your loading dose and within 15 minutes then a convulsion occurs, then you can go ahead and give a 2 grams again of magnesium sulfate 20% um, a solution to uh, counteract the effect of uh, those um, uh, convulsions. So basically that is magnesium sulfate. That is how you reduce the magnesium sulfate concentration from 50% to 20%. If you have any other concentration different from 50%, you can still use the same formula to get to the concentration that you want. And those are some of the things that obviously you can look out for, some of the side effects to look out for, and how you can control levels of uh, toxicity. So that summarizes our topic on hypertensive disorders and some of the major things that are included in the management of these hypertensive disorders. Now, if you found this particular video helpful and insightful, then don't hesitate to drop me a comment in the comment section. If you have any questions, drop those questions right there. If you have not yet followed me on Facebook, then head to the Brain Shakers Academy and do follow. Head on to the YouTube channel as well. Hit that notification button. Do subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of this amazing stuff and thank you so much for watching and as always from me i will see you in the next one